Hi, this is Russ Bleemer uh, from uh, Alternatives to the High Cost of Litigation. I edit it for the CPR Institute. That's at www.cpradr.org. Our publisher provides Alternatives to the High Cost of Litigation at altnewsletter.com. I'm here to talk about our brand new, just posted July, August issue. We have a terrific article in that issue called Will the Supreme Court take up allowing discovery under Section 1782 for private international arbitrations? It's quite a mouthful, um, and, and, uh, but it's fascinating stuff. I'm, I'm honored to be joined by John Pinney today. John and I were talking at CPR annual meeting late last winter um, uh, about arbitration doings, and he alerted me to this issue about Section 1782. And it turned out to be something more than an issue. Through John's great work in the, uh, the new alternatives, you'll see that, um, that this issue is a sweeping uh, uh, phenomena hitting the circuit courts. The, the, the current interest in the section 1782, I'm gonna give you a little background before John, John explains what it really means. Has, it's come up since 1999. There's an NBC case in the second circuit. There's a Biederman case in the fifth circuit. Section 1782 provides for judicial assistance by U.S. federal district courts for obtaining evidence uh, uh, for use before, and quote, here's the definitions, foreign and international tribunals. Now, this NBC case and Biederman both held that a private international arbitration tribunal was not a tribunal within the meaning of 1782, and it couldn't be used for discovery. Fast forward to our discussion last winter, which was about a Sixth Circuit case from last September. It's got a long name, and it's in the article. Um, now, Abdul Latif Jamil Transportation versus FedEx. That case went the other way from NBC and, and Biederman. It held that 1782 could be invoked to um, secure evidence for use in private international arbitrations. Then in March, three months ago, the Fourth Circuit agreed in a Servotronics case. So this just seems like a standard arbitration issue in the, in, in, in the circuit courts. John's research has provided us with four other appeals pending in the second, third, seventh, and ninth circuits. So a total of six cases. That includes um, a second Servotronics case in the Seventh Circuit and the request to overrule that NBC case from 21 years ago in the Second Circuit. Now, both the Seventh and Second Circuit cases have been argued, and John has been watching religiously each day. We expect a decision any moment in them. Um, it's also expected that a petition for cert to the Supreme Court is going to be filed if it hasn't already in the Fourth Circuit version of the Servotronics case. John, it's, it's quite, a, quite a mouthful, and thank you so much for setting it out for us in the current article. What do you see developing? What do we need to know on 1782 in arbitration? Well, thanks, Russ. Um, the story begins with a U.S. Supreme Court decision in 2004 uh, involving Intel and advanced micro devices. Uh, that case was the first and actually the only case that has uh, made it to the uh, U.S. Supreme Court involving Section 1782. And as you mentioned, Section 1782 uh, authorizes U.S. district courts to provide uh, judicial assistance for foreign and international tribunals. Uh, the NBC and Biederman cases, the original 1999 uh, Second Circuit and Fifth Circuit cases, held that the word tribunal uh, in the phrase uh, foreign inter and international tribunals in Section 1782 did not include private international uh, arbitration tribunals. Uh, and as a result, most of the cases that have been decided since 1999, uh, up until last September when the Sixth Circuit decided otherwise, have held uh, that tribunals do not include private international tribunals for the purposes of 1782. However, uh, I think that there is a sea change with the Sixth Circuit's decision in what I'll call the ALJ case in September. Uh, uh, 2019. Uh, in that case, uh, the judge, uh, Judge Bush of the Sixth Circuit, went through a detailed analysis as a common meaning of the word tribunal and concluded that 
uh, the statute itself would include tribunals uh, that are private international tribunals. And that was bolstered, as you mentioned, by the Servitronics case in the Fourth Circuit in March. Uh, the uh, issues now is, will this have significance with regard to uh, how uh, users, arbitrators, and institutions deal with the issue of discovery in international uh, commercial arbitration? Um, and uh, the two other cases uh, that you mentioned, uh, one was the Guao decision in the Second Circuit, which is seeking to overrule the 21-year-old uh, NBC case. Uh, and then the second, the clone of the Fourth Circuit's uh, Servitronics case that's still pending in the Seventh Circuit, uh, could involve actually a circuit split between the same essential case. So the next question is, the title of the article is, is well, will the Supreme Court take case out? Yeah, that, that's amazing. The Servotronis case, by the way, involved the foreign party that's involved is um, Rolls-Royce from England. Um, uh, uh, thanks for highlighting those. You, you just started to get into it. You have a few really interesting points. Uh, I know you want to hit on the takeaways and the implications here for international commercial arbitration. Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, availability of discovery in arbitration has long been a highly controversial issue, and the potential use of Section 1782 clearly itself is highly controversial. Among the specific concerns are, for example, one, is the availability of U.S.-style discovery, including dep oral depositions and broad uh, document discovery from third parties, uh, consistent with the expectations of users in international commercial arbitration. Commercial expectations are, are, are such a huge part of everything we do in approaching arbitration and using it in the first place. And then going on is that, you know, what is the appropriate balance between the cost of obtaining evidence, especially from third parties, uh, under a U.S. compulsion uh, statute, 1782, and the likelihood that such discovery will produce evidence that is needed for a just award, a just adjudication of the dispute pending in the arbitration. And then continuing, there's some other issues too, is what should the role of the tribunal be in determining whether a party may seek uh, discovery under 1782 in the US courts, or should that be vested entirely within the discretion of the tribunal? Um, and the parties, uh, being the users, should consider whether they want to address the issue in their arbitration agreements themselves, uh, although I'll say parenthetically is that frequently parties don't think that far ahead. Uh, and then uh, there's, uh, should, as a practical matter, arbitrators and tribunals insist upon prior approval from the tribunals themselves before a party actually proceeds and applies under Section 1782 if that uh, uh, discovery potentially is available. So those are some of the issues that I see are, are ones that uh, uh, should be given some consideration by both users, uh, arbitration tribunals, and potentially even the administrators. That, 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 that's great, uh, John. Um, uh, focusing in on the practical at the end there, and that was how I wanted to, to wind up with you. Of course, John uh, is a, a senior attorney at Graydon in Cincinnati. He's been going at this for 40 plus years and counting, <laughs> and has been with CPR for that long as well. And he just centered on the practice. And, and as he knows, the CPR Institute, we take what is a esoteric, complicated issue such as this and try and boil it down onto what the users need to do, what the arbitrators need to do, what the institutions like CPR, which provides neutrals for, for these matters, need to watch as well. It sounded like this could potentially be a, um, a checkoff item uh, on a drafting list down the road. Do you have further suggestions and further points on the practical um, application of this? 
Well, uh, yes, Russ, I think, uh, first of all, whether or not the Supreme Court takes the case, the Servitronics case, assuming that there is an application for cert, which again is expected. And in fact, the Servitronics lawyers uh, act for representing Rolls-Royce, the respondent in the underlying arbitration pending in London, uh, indicated on a uh, motion to stay the mandate in the Fourth Circuit that they indeed intended to file for cert. So uh, the time limit for that will be the end of August uh, uh, under the current uh, COVID-19 extensions for the Supreme Court. Uh, but whether or not the Supreme Court takes the case uh, is, is a situation where this issue will in my view, likely remain a significant issue going on into the future. Because if they take the case, my sense is, is that they're taking it because they are more likely than not to follow the more recent Sixth Circuit and Fourth Circuit decisions and conclude that 1782, as it's now written, would uh, allow for discovery under that section in private international arbitrations. But if they don't take the case, the issue still will fester for many more years. So I think as a practical matter, uh, users, arbitrators, and institutions should take into account how this would potentially affect both positively and negatively the institution of international arbitration. Uh, so uh, in essence, the practical issues that I see is that arbitration tribunals should directly address whether they take control through the preliminary pretrial or pre-hearing uh, uh, order that they will inevitably enter in most arbitrations and limit the right of the parties to proceed under section 1782 if but only if they have the permission from the tribunal to do so. And this is just like under the IBA rules for evidence is that all of the uh, discovery proceedings have to go through the tribunal and seek their approval upon a showing of good cause for that uh, uh, proceeding. Uh, and in particular, uh, the fundamental question as I see it is a cost benefit analysis because uh, as long as the litigation is pending in the United States with regard to the availability of 1782, you have prolonged litigation, extreme expense, uh, and a diversion from the real purpose of the arbitration is to get this dispute resolved efficiently and effectively. Almost like just using it turns it into something other than arbitration. Absolutely. Um, uh, John Penny of Graydon in Cincinnati, thank you so much for making a sense of this and providing guidance uh, here on YouTube and on our website in, in print at altnewsletter.com. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions um, and you can't get to the article or any comments, uh, send them to alternatives at cpradr.org. John, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks, Russ.